news. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. How'd you do? I didn't think this was that bad of a test. This was the June 2019 exam. I think as you go through it, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I made some silly mistakes. This is going to be, well, my name is Mr. Kraus, but for a while, for the next hour or so, you can call me Mr. Key. This is going to be part one, one through 12. Now, all of this stuff eventually can be found at www.mrkrausemath.com. Now, if you're looking for other Algebra 2 review material, you haven't just taken the test, but you're actually going to just look to see for review, then go here, not con. I'm not a convict. Also, if you're here and you haven't tried the problems on your own, Shame on you. Shame on you. And by the way, I've got water because it's like 90 degrees where I'm at right now. And I'm going to start sweating soon. So I'm going to drink some water. Mm, mm, mm. No coffee for me today. So let's get going. Moving on. Let's go. Number one, a sociologist reviews randomly selected surveillance video from a public park over a period of several years and records the amount of time people spend on a smartphone. The statistical procedure sociologists use is, listen, if the person doesn't know it's happening, it's clearly an observational study. Census, asking people. Experiment, doing something to people. Surveys, asking people. It is clearly an observational study. And the key to it is always... Do the people know something is happening to them? If they don't, then it's not them. All right. Which statement is true for all real numbers? Now, okay. If I take this thing and double distribute x minus y, I'm going to show you how to do it the right way, and I'm also going to show you how to do it mathematically. So this is going to be a little bit time-consuming because I want to show you like two different ways to do this. This is x squared. This is minus xy and minus xy, so that's minus 2xy. And negative y times negative y is plus y squared. So that's out. So anything with a 1 in it has got to go. Now we got to check 2. Now, wow. Um, yeah. This, we, we could be here forever. Uh, you would just do this. I ch I'm going to choose not to do it like this. And then double distribute these two. If you double distribute these two, you get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And then you multiply by x plus y. And you'll end up with x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3y squared x plus y cubed. And this one doesn't work at all. So the answer is neither one nor two. But nobody in their right mind would actually go through all that math, especially on this regents that, you know, says to you, hey, kids, use your dumb calculator, 2.357. I just made that up. I don't want it that big. I'm going to store that into x. Press enter. I'm going to take 5.32, and I'm going to store that into y. And then I'm going to type in parentheses x minus y squared. And then I'm going to type in x squared, was it plus y squared? Plus y squared. And show you, oops, that they don't equal each other. Since they don't equal each other, number one doesn't work. Then the other side is, was it x minus, by the way? Yeah. So x plus y parenthesis cubed. That's a big number. And then it's going to be x cubed plus, excuse me, 3x times y. If you just put 3xy in, it's going to crash on you. Plus y cubed. Again, you don't get it. So there it is. They're not the same. There's the answer. What is the solution set of the following system of equations? Well, this is a little weird one. Let's go to the old don't make my stupider machine. I think it's 3x. I should have my, my uh, answer key open so I don't make any mistakes. 3x plus 6. Enter. And then... Tab, parenthesis, x plus 4, parenthesis, squared, uh, minus 10. Now, here's the thing. There's clearly an answer here. And if I go into menu, 6, 4, click, 
click. There it is, 06. So that's it. But there's also one down here somewhere. And I think if I do that menu 64 again, this time I'm going to go here and here. And it reshifts it for me. And there it is, negative 5, negative 9. So those two are both right. So it is choice All right, moving on. Hold on, my, my bank attorney me just called me. I'm mm, Coffee's so much better, but it's too hot. That was my bank guy. We're moving, and I got to be out of here on Friday in two days. Okay, Irma initially ran one mile. She ran one mile in over 10 minutes. I'm not sure if you go that running. It's kind of like walking fast. And you didn't make a training program to reduce her one mile time. That's why you see this being reduced. You see how it's going down here? Okay, so for a week, for 12 consecutive weeks, and right here is 12, week 12. So we got to figure out which statement is correct. Her one mile speed increased as her speed her one mile speed increased as the number of her one mile speed. It's not speed, it's time. It has nothing to do with speed. Well, I guess her one, I, they really should say one mile time. This isn't it. So her one mile speed decreased. Wow. I don't like the way they're answering this question, and I don't have the answer key with me, and I'm not a big fan of the way they ask this. This is time. So her time is going down as her as the number of weeks. So time to finish the race, the time to finish the race is decreasing. So that means her speed is increasing. So even though they're not, this has nothing to do with it, the only way to reduce your time is if your speed increases. So your speed is increasing. So your speed increased as the number of weeks increased. That appears to be true. Her speed can't decrease if her time is going down, so that doesn't make any sense. As the trend continues, she'll run under a six-minute mile. So if we continue this trend, you'll see that it's growing you know, it's just going small. There's 13, 14. We're not getting down to a six-minute mile. So that's not true. And she reduced her one-mile time the most between week 10 and 12. Well, this is week 10, and this is week 12. I would say she reduced it the most from week 0 to week 2 or 1. So that's not it. So it looks like, it. and again, I don't have the answer key with me, but it looks like it's choice 1. And I'm pretty sure that's true. But boy, that was a tricky question. I almost missed that one. A seven-year lease for office space states that an annual rent is $85,000 for the first year and will increase 6% each additional year for the lease. So that's exponential growth, or that's a, you know, this is just a geometric series. So 85000 right? We're going to multiply by 1.06 raised to the N minus 1. So that's our geometric series. So if I plug in 1, I get 85,000 if I plug in two, so on and so forth. But I want to do it for a seven-year lease, and I like to call this the big ash E. So that's from N equals one to seven. Now you can also do it another way, but we're not. We're just gonna do it this way. So 85,000, we're gonna do the big ash E. I love this way much better. So we'll go shabam. The big old E is underneath the key of everything. So N, one, seven, oops, seven, 85, one, two, three, parenthesis, 1.06, raised to the N minus one. I bet it's that big one. 713,000, there it is. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, let's move on. Um, which expression defines this? Well, this clearly is not linear, and this one doesn't make any sense. Um, they're all going through 5, so that's not going to make you see how they go through 5 here. This 2 to the x, 2 to the 2x, I'm going to guess these two are probably growing way too fast. My guess is going to be this one, 
because it's not growing that fast. But I'm not really 100% sure. 2 to the 2x is growing really, really fast. And 2 to the x is growing really fast. Not quite as this one. This one's definitely not right. So it's probably 2 or 3. My guess is it's this one. Let's go check on our graphing calculator. Um, and I can show you another way we can do this one. But let's go to graphing calculator. We're going to do 5 parenthesis, 2 parenthesis. Turn the page, raise to the, oh, that's on the inside, shift, and this would be X over 2, hit that, and then go into control T, and I see 210, yep, 420, yep, 640, yep, now how could I do this another way, I could just plug in 2, so this would be 5, 2 to the 2 over 2, which is 1, so that's equal to 10. And if I plug in the 4, 5, 2 to the 4 over 2, that's 2. 2 squared is 4, so that is two times, 5 times 4, which is 20, so on and so forth. Either of these ways just to grab and look at the table. All right, so uh, given that, that, which statement is also true? Well, when it says something is a factor, then that means that it has to equal zero. So these two don't make any sense. Now, if this is a factor, then x equals one is a root. If this is a factor, then x equals negative one is a root. In other words, if I type in negative one, I guess you get zero out. If I type in one, I should get zero out. So there it is. There's the big winner, choice four. That is the remainder theorem. You all know that. Which statement is false? See, false. See, if I look down at my answer key, I got this wrong. So I want to make sure we understand things. Okay, let's do this. When you have exponents raised to exponents, we multiply the exponents. So this is 3 halves times 2, so that's just 3. So this becomes x cubed equals the fourth root of x cubed. So I'm going to guess this one's the right answer, which means it doesn't work. But let me check the other ones real quick. If I do 3 times 1 fourth, that's x to the 3 fourths. And x to the 3 fourths is, in fact, remember this denominator is the root. That's the exponent. One, 3 halves times 1 half, that's 3 fourths again. So th these just multiply to give me 3 fourths. And this one gives me x to the 4 thirds. But notice this is the root and this is the exponent. So definitely this is the answer. Now, how could I check that to make sure I'm right? I mean, I want to make sure I'm right. I should have. Well, actually, the only reason I missed it before I just got on with you is because I did not read correctly. So I'm going to take some stupid number, store it in for x. I missed the false thing. Um, and then I'm going to type in the left side. Um, x raised to the 3 halves, 3 divided by 2, oops, I should have put that whole thing in parentheses, and then square it, and get enter, and then do the fourth root of x cubed. And you see how they're not even remotely the same? There you go, that's the answer, choice 2, or choice 1. Inverse, oh my god, this, that's it? Okay, first step in finding an inverse, switch x and y. So I get x equals 4y plus 5. Bring the 5 over, I get x minus 5 equals 4y. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and I get y equals 1 fourth x minus 1 5 fourths. Boom. Now, I'm going to check this one graphically, too, because even though that was an easy question, and I know I didn't make a mistake, I've said before I didn't make a mistake, and I did make a mistake. So 4x plus 5. Now, remember, inverses are reflections over the line y equals x. So if that's true, it better go through this point right here, and it better look something like this. So press tab, 1 fourth. Control division 1 over 4x minus 5 divided by 4. And there we go. Now, does the blue line and the and the black line look like reflections over the red line? Absolutely. freaking All right, which self-remodel by a geometric? Now, geometric means 
we are going to multiply or increase by a percent. Anytime you increase by a percent, that's multiplying. So a cell phone company charges $30 per month for two gigs and $12.50. So that's per month. That's the same amount every month. So that's not going up. A temperature in your car is 79 degrees. You lower the temperature of your air conditioning by two degrees every three minutes. Now you're doing a consistent rate. That's arithmetic. David's parents, David's parents have set limits, 50 minutes per week that he may play online during the during school. However, they will increase his time by 5% per week for the next 10 weeks. Anytime you increase by a percent, that looks like a really good one for geometric, and I think that's the right answer. Sarah's $100 in piggy bank and saves an additional, that's $15 per week. So there's our, there's our winner. Anytime you increase by a percent, that's going to be geometric. And then we get to this question. First thing I think we need to do on this question is combine like terms. At first when I read it, I'm like, oh, there's, that's pretty easy. But then I'm like, holy crap. So let's do this. N to the fourth plus 4N cubed uh, minus 21N squared minus 36N. Plus 108. I don't even know what they were getting at with this problem other than, yeah, perhaps I could graph this thing. Um, I mean, I'm just going to graph the original for now. I'll tell you why I did the other stuff in a second. End of the fourth. I'm going to show you a cool trick on this calculator. Minus 9. Oh, we can't use N. God damn it. Dang it. Got to use X. X cubed squared plus 4n plus 4x cubed minus 21x not minus 21 minus 12 uh, 12 x squared minus 36 my goodness I'm missing stuff all over the place minus 36 x plus 108 all right so that's what that looks like wow all right so now we're going to go and go um i'm going to press tab and i'm just going to do uh th these f answers which are x oops parenthesis x squared x squared minus nine parenthesis parenthesis x plus 6, parenthesis, parenthesis, x minus 2. Oh, there it is. But then I'm going to do the next one. x plus 3, x minus 3, x plus 6, x minus 2. Oh my goodness, that one's on there. And then the other two wouldn't match. So, both, a, a, both number 1 and number 2 work. Number 1 works and number 2 works. Now the reason number 2 works is because if you factor this, you get n plus 3 and minus 3. And it says completely factored. And completely factored would be choice 2. Now the reason I put it in this form over here, um, because quite frankly, this was too much work. I would just do it this way. Go into calculator, go menu, uh, algebra. Um, solve a system of equations, solve a system of linear equation. Nope, cancel. Menu, algebra, poly tools, find the roots of a polynomial. It's a fourth degree polynomial. I always change this to complex, even though I didn't need to in this case. And it's 1, 4, 1, 4, negative 21, negative 36, and 108. And there are the answers. Negative 6 gives me x plus 6. Negative 3 gives me x plus 3. 2 gives me x minus 2. And 3 gives me x minus 3. And that's why it's, that's the answer. All right, last one for this video. What is the solution for this equation? Oh, my goodness. Are you kidding me? So I'm going to factor out a w. w 
x squared plus 1 equals 0. So set this equal to 0, x squared plus 1 equals 0, x squared equals negative 1, x equals plus or minus. Now when you take the square root, you got to put a plus or minus, so it's plus or minus, and the square root of negative 1 is i. I was hoping you'd get that. Now, is that right? Let's check. Let's store any number we want, 2.35, and we're going to store that into w. And then we're going to take um, 2.689, store that into x. And then we're going to type in this problem, w. You can't write w, actually. you got to write w times x squared plus x. Uh, I should not have done this because the answers were x, i, and negative i. I should have put in i here, so backspace. I have to put in actually the answers I came up with, i, enter. And then I type this in. Now, if it works, this should equal 0. Hmm. Oh, it's plus w. 0. And then if I do negative i, that wasn't, I, I didn't do a very good job of showing you how to check this. Control of R, X, enter. Go back and type this in, and you get zero again. So the answer is plus and minus I. Sorry about that. But the factoring and the solving of was pretty easy. Anyway, hit the subscribe, hit like, make sure you keep studying, keep working. These tests are doable, kids. I'm going to give you lots of tricks and lots of other ways to do the problem. So keep working, okay? Catch you all on the flip side. Goodbye, goodbye. Keep going, goodbye.